Hey everyone, um, talking about my experience with uh, marijuana to treat um, Crohn's disease before I had um, surgery. Um, well, specifically, not just to treat it, but um, specifically to use it to try to decrease the inflammation and just ease the symptoms in general. And um, the reason I wanted to try it is I've read a lot of studies, one in particular, I don't remember the total number of participants but um, all of them had active, um, I think it was Crohn's or colitis, I'm not 100% certain on that, but um, it was vague in the description of it, but using, I think it was like they smoked twice a day, it didn't say specifically, you know, a certain strain or what type or an amount or anything, or if it was spaced out at a certain time. So it was, it was kind of vague, um, the guidelines, but what caught my attention was that 70% um, of the people who took the, um, the trial um, achieved remission and um, the other 30% <clears throat> that didn't, um, didn't achieve remission still um, reported um, significant improvements in their symptoms. So um, yeah, I interpret that as like 100% of the people um, got better, you know, even if you weren't like fully um, in remission, which obviously that is the goal, but you know, when you're struggling with it, I mean, you just want to see signs that you're getting better is kind of the first step, um, you know, especially after having it for so long. And in my case, I felt like I was always so close um, to remission once I kind of, you know, developed a routine and things kind of settled down for me. But um, that's, um, well, actually it was, it was that and then just people that I knew online that had used it as well and just kind of word of mouth hearing about it. Um, you know, a lot of people had had success. So, um, you know, I, I felt like this was the you know best news I'd heard in a long time that it was going to help, you know, one way or another. But at the same time, after so many things, you know, not working, um, at least to get me in remission, um, you know, I wasn't too optimistic for any miracles or anything. Um, but also, you know, being in California at the time, this is before um, it was fully fully legal there, um, you know, it made you feel kind of special <laughs> in a good way that, you know, I'll have access, um, you know, to marijuana legally that you know, a lot of other people don't. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting if nothing else. Um, so I, I just looked up some doctors and I had to go to um, Santa Cruz <clears throat> to uh, meet a doctor. And it was just kind of like meeting with any doctor. Um, you know, you go to the office and you know, they ask you a little bit about your medical history, but, you know, more specifically about Crohn's, you know, why, why you're there to treat it, <clears throat> that sort of thing. And, um, you yeah, know, we just talked a little bit and um, he, he was telling me about some other studies and just giving me some of the just kind of general um, ideas. And uh, he gave me some literature on, you know, maybe where to get started because it's, I was thinking it was like you go to any other doctor and, you know, if they're going to give you some kind of medication, they kind of write out some kind of an order or, um, you know, there's a little bit more specific guidelines of, you know, like say if you get some tablets, like you're supposed to take these three times a day with a meal or, or an empty stomach or, you know, X amount of hours apart, um, you know, there's some sort of guidelines, whereas here, um, you know, they just kind of give you some, you know, as I said, some literature to kind of read and look over and then it's like you just go to a dispensary and knock yourself out you know um so a little bit surprised at that because i you know i done a little bit of research but um yeah you know, i i didn't really i wasn't expecting that much freedom you know right away so um yeah i went to a dispensary and um, all the people there are very knowledgeable and um you know they were able to kind of follow up on that and you know knowing that was my first time um you know, using it in any way. I'd, I'd never smoked before or anything. I, I, um, I Pretty much smoking and edibles were the only two um, like delivery methods that I was really familiar with um, uh, you know, before uh, getting my clearance. And um, you know, obviously I learned a lot more about it at the time, but um, yeah, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to smoke it because I just, I just don't like smoke and I thought it'd be you know, kind of gross. But um, yeah, you know, I went to the dispensary and um, they actually got me started with a, the first uh, medication I ever used. It was a sublingual um, tincture 
and it was very, very low THC, just to make sure that, um, you know, the first time you use it, like, you're not going to get, like, stupid high or anything like that. It was, it was kind of build up a tolerance. Um, and, you know, at, at the time, my symptoms weren't really that bad, so it was still kind of hard to tell, but, um, you know, they didn't expect that it was going to do a whole lot, and um, it didn't really, um, I, I didn't feel any effects or anything. It just... Um, I don't even remember if it was flavored. I, I remember it had kind of a sour um, taste to it, but um, it kind of tasted like medicine. <laughs> you know, it wasn't it wasn't gross, but it, it wasn't like it didn't taste good or anything either. It just kind of, you know, it just had its taste. And um, I did that for a while. I think I went through like maybe two or three of those over time. Um, and then eventually um, from there, um, I think I did start smoking and... Um, Again, from those studies, I didn't know exactly, um, you know, what to do. So just like anything else, I started very, um, not smoking a lot. I mean, obviously, you know, with this, it's, that's another misconception I learned a lot, not just for Crohn's, but for anything. Is like a lot of people, um, you know, just when you hear someone's using marijuana to treat something, they think, oh, well, I just want to get high. But um, whether it's the type or the strain that you um you know, smoke, ingest, or, you know, take in some form, or um, just whatever your um, ailment is, a lot of times it doesn't really require you to get high. That's not really a goal. And that's not really an outcome. Um, so I would just smoke a little bit, and um, I always make sure that I would do it at first when I was just going to be at home. So in case I did get high or anything, um, you know, I was just going to be <laughs> sitting at home anyway. Um, but then eventually over time, I was able to, like, I would just smoke really small amounts throughout the day. Um, and that was one of the things they recommended too. Um, you you kind of keep it in your system. So, um, you know, if it is going to, if it is going to, um, you know, help, help ease the inflammation and all of that, um, there's not going to be like long periods where it's not in your body where, you know, the inflammation can kind of come back and it just like, um, yeah, I, I don't know if it works that, that fast. But that's one of the things they recommended. So um, I just kind of through um, experimenting with it, I just found like, you know, kind of what amount I could smoke and you know, not feel anything or feel very, you know, little enough that if I had to do anything that required me to think, um, I mean, I wouldn't drive or anything unless, you know, over time I did reach a point where I knew like this is very small amount would have like zero effect on me. And yeah, I wasn't worried about it. Um, like I, throughout the day, I mean, like I would smoke and just, you know, a little tiny bit and go coach basketball, you know, but it's like, obviously I wouldn't do that if I was going to stink or if my eyes were going to be red or if I was going to be like too stupid to drive. I mean, that's why I started, um, you know, only doing it when I was at home with no plans. So I, you know, so I, I could know, you know, what was appropriate and what would be okay. And, um, you know, again, because my symptoms were so, um, so slight at the time, it was hard to tell if it was really doing anything for the inflammation but it definitely was helping. Um, like if I had just kind of like stomach aches or cramps that you just get throughout the day, um, it would almost instantly go away when I would smoke and it, and it would not take much. I mean, it really, I would just only have to like inhale like you know two or three times and it was like instantly gone and it would have no negative effects on me you know, whatsoever. Um, so that was really nice because I, you know, I, I would just have little, just mild cramps a lot throughout the day um, at that time. And um, I didn't have like a really specific um, go-to strain. Um, I, as it recommended, I used more of a, some sort of a sativa or possibly even a hybrid um, during the day. And then I would use an indica at night um, more for a sleeping aid in which I would usually just smoke in my room. So like the smell would kind of stay in there while I'm falling asleep. Um, maybe like two hours at the most, hour, at least an hour, somewhere between an hour, two hour time range of when I wanted to go to bed. And um, it was perfect because I, I didn't really get like, you know, the stereotype of high, like someone in a movie or TV show where like it's comical for them to be high. Um, but I definitely would feel it, just that kind of laziness, that everything kind of slowing down. And, um, you know, you want to just kind of go lay somewhere dark and that's the whole point <laughs> you know, so that that worked probably out of anything that i used for any reason i think um 
just using any, well, between smoking or edibles, which I'll get to later, um, I think just the indicas to go to sleep, those worked really, really well. And I, I got great sleep um, from those. And um, with any of them, I didn't really have a go-to strain. I just did my best to like kind of stretch my money as far as it would go. So meaning I'm not going to buy the cheapest stuff just because it's the cheapest stuff. <laughs> but I can't always you know, afford the best ones either. So I, I did my best that I could to get something that you know, is strong enough to work, but isn't going to cost me too much either and last a long time. So, um, you know, I, I would just kind of experiment with some different ones, but, you know, as long as they were similar and, um, you know, again, again, the staff, you know, was always great and, you know, they, they could help. Um, <laughs> they always, you know, pretty much firsthand and tried everything. So they could always tell you, um, you know, their experience with it. And that definitely helped as well. Um, in fact, the first time I was ever going to go smoke, the guy, I probably would have been one of those people that was just like, just breathing and, and you know, blowing and inhaling and not working. But, you know, he told me it's, it's just like when you sip um, liquid through a straw. And um, I think had he not told me that, I, I probably would have been one of those people that didn't even know how to smoke, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, so right from the start, um, you know, something I adapted to well. And um, after that, um, I, I felt like I'd built up a little bit of a tolerance to it. And I was ready to try edibles. And um, speaking of them knowing a lot, um, the first time I tried edibles, I got like, I would call it like the equivalent of like a cereal bar, um, granola bar kind of kind of thing. Um, and it was probably flatter than most of those, but it, it was a good like, probably about eight to 10 inches long. And then um, like, I, I'm thinking of like a 12 inch ruler, like not quite that long but almost that flat and probably twice as wide. So you can kind of imagine, you know, give or take what that's like. And, um, you know, but they, they warned me that, you know, it's, it's a lot stronger. You absorb, you absorb a lot more of it, you know, when you ingest it than you do by smoking. So just, um, you know, be careful. So, you know, okay, that's, that's fine. But I was also thinking, yeah, I've already built up a little bit of a tolerance. So, um, I don't know, we'll see. Um, but anyway, we were going to a, a baseball game with some family friends and my family's going to be driving. So I, I was thinking, well, you know, I, I didn't, I never like drank or did drugs or anything. So you might as well, you know, make this experience fun, you know, at times if you can too. So I was going to go, you know, and use my edibles, just, you know, have this a snack on, uh, during the baseball game. Uh, it was going to be my plan. I thought, yeah, maybe it'll be, it'll be fun to get a little high at a baseball game. You know, we'll see what that's like. And, um, I was tempted because I thought I'd built up a tolerance to take like half of it. And I think the whole bar, I want to say was a hundred um, milligrams. And I thought, no, you know, that, that guy told me to be careful. And we'd gotten there really early um, for batting practice. I think there was a, a giveaway uh, that my brother wanted to get. So we were there plenty early. And I thought, no, you know, they, they told me to, um, you know, be safe. And I, I was thinking like, what's the risk reward? Like there really isn't one. So I took probably the equivalent of like maybe a sixth, to an eighth of the entire bar length. So not a whole lot, like I would say like one bite, give or take. And, you know, and they said to wait about two hours, you know, before taking more. So yeah, I ate it. Obviously didn't expect anything till about then because you know, I fully trusted them. And I mean, it was almost right on the dot. Two hours later, I felt like the, um, the comparison that I've used is like when you were in grade school or maybe even middle school, um, or, you know, for, for any of us that are old enough, um, when you would have like uh, the, they wheel in like one of the TVs on one of those big tall carts, so you're watching a movie uh, during the day. And it's like the screen was blank, but you could, you could sense it that it was on. You could kind of hear that, that sound, or I'm not really, really even sure what you would call that. But I felt like someone had just plugged me in. All of a sudden, like I just kind of sat up straight and I, I felt like I couldn't breathe. And yeah, I kept taking deep breaths. I was like, no, I, I am breathing. It just feels like my airway is really tight. And um, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sure if anyone watching this has been high, this is probably, probably laughing right now because you, you, know, you all know what it's like. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I was dizzy and like everything, you know, my head was spinning and just, you know, all, all of those things. And it was, you, you know, like they say, time kind of slows down. So I really have no idea how long. It probably was just a few seconds, but it felt like several minutes. I mean, it was legitimately uncomfortable and not fun. And, um, you know, they always say like um, common things are like, you know, you get goofy and stupid, you get thirsty. 
and those kind of things. But one thing I remember from that day is one, everything was spinning. So like, say if I'm, if I'm just looking straight ahead and somebody from over here calls me and if I would turn my head, I felt like it was on a swivel where it's like, if I turned it, I turned it way too far. And then I had to consciously turn back that way. And it just took a long time for me to focus on something. Uh, needless to say, I, I hardly remember the game. I could not follow the ball whatsoever. Um, but the other thing that was really odd, and I used to get this a lot if I was ever, um, if I ever was like high enough to really, you know, feel significant effects of it, um, that I've, I'd never heard of before, but I, it's probably the, the overall biggest impact that I would feel is I had like hypersensitive hearing, but not close up. Like if I'm just having a conversation with somebody from, you know, just a few feet away, it sounds normal, but I could hear dis like just the odd sounds in the background. Like say if somebody was hammering something like 200 feet away, I felt like I was one of those guys on the sidelines of the football games with like little satellites and the antenna or the, the headphones and like, you know, to, to pick up those sounds. Like I could hear things from really far away. Like I was wearing headphones and there, and it's not even like it was annoying. It's just, it sounded like I was, that's what I felt like I was wearing headphones and it was just like, I don't know, I, you couldn't even always make out words, but being at a baseball game, I was just picking up random pieces of conversations from, particularly behind me. Um, <laughs> it was really weird. And um, once I kind of settled down, um, you know, it was still an odd feeling, you know, as I said, as far as the game, like I don't remember much of the game. And then pretty much by the time we just got to the car, like I just crashed out. But um, that was also my first experience where I felt like, man, this is really going to work as a sleeping aid. And, you know, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, um, once I eventually actually even bought some specifically um, for sleep, I mean, those were the best. That, that was probably the best overall um, just thing that came out of it um, for, for any symptom. Um, and not that I had a lot of trouble sleeping, but... Um, yeah, you know, ever since I got sick, and you know, I never had great sleep. I, I I felt like I at least had consistent sleep, um, you know, before that. But that definitely um, helped me fall asleep faster. Um, you know, like I said, if I would take in that one to two hour window, it just somewhere in there, it'd be time. Like I said, I just felt like laying down and closing my eyes. I would, and just you know, before you know it, I mean, you know, you're out and you just wake up. Sometimes I still wouldn't sleep that long, but yeah, you know, never had trouble falling asleep. And, and it didn't take much. Uh, what my my go to ended up being like, they were kind of like a Tootsie Roll um, consistency and chocolate, obviously. But they, they came in just these little trays, and they they were 100 milligrams in each little square or brick. They were almost like a, a one by two Lego piece, about that size, a little bit smaller, but kind of that shape. Um, and each one of those was 25. So usually, um, I would just cut each one of those in half, so I would have eight, and then it's like if I just wanted to kind of doze off, if I was already kind of tired, I would even just bite that from that one. I would just bite that in half, taking only roughly like 12, 12 ish, say 10, 10 to 15, give or take. And that might be enough to get me to sleep. On a normal night, I would take, you know, the, um, the half of the one, the one serving. And then if I ever wanted to like really crash out, I would just take like the whole, the whole brick, not the hundred, but the 25, you know, cut up into fourths. So that's what I really liked about it is, um, depending on how you wanted to feel, you know, you, you could kind of, um, you know, control that. And, you know, that worked really well for me. And obviously, I, you know, again, if the whole point's going to sleep, like I'm not going to be driving, I'm not going to be doing anything. And, um, just another thing that I noticed from that is, um, you know, a lot of times they say that it makes you feel just like really goofy and stupid and like everything's funny. Um, I never really felt like that either. But it had this weird effect, like if I was watching TV and it's late at night, I'm going to bed. And in particular, a lot of times I would, I'd catch, like, I think it's on the Cartoon Network, the um, Bob's Burgers reruns. And it's like sometimes if I was watching anything funny, you know, for that matter, and if I was in that state where I'm like, I, I wouldn't say that I felt like really high, but just a little bit of kind of like drowsy kind of buzzed. It's like the jokes would hit me a delayed reaction. And again, to use like an analogy, I think like in a cartoon um, like if you could imagine like when, like if there's like a fuse attached to my forehead to the TV, like they'd make some joke. And normally if it's funny, like you would just laugh or react immediately. And I would sit there and just kind of stare. And like, I don't know, I would think about it and kind of repeat it in my mind, like maybe two or three times. And I felt like that fuse was just coming. And then eventually like a few seconds later it hits. And then it was like 10 times funnier than it would have been. And it was, I don't know, it was just weird. It's hard to explain, which, um, you know, again, if, <laughs> if, you've, if you've used it and felt like that, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But it was just a little different than what I was expecting, uh, you know, when just you hear a lot of those things. 
Um, but the other edibles I would take sometimes um, were, again, just to replace the smoking so I would not have to actually smoke, which I never really did particularly enjoy. Um, but usually some kind of like little gummies or like chocolates that you would suck on or, you know, just kind of dissolve um, like chocolate chips or Hershey Kiss, you know, something like that. Um, or like Jolly Rancher style um, ones. They were very, like you might buy a pack of um, like 20 pieces and like each piece might only be two, um, two milligrams or something like that. And um, again, the point was that they were low enough that you're not going to feel it. Um, that you can, you know, be functional throughout the day, but it, it keeps just the, you know, low levels of the THC um, in your system. And um, that's, that's probably what I did um, the most on a regular basis for the most part. And then um, one other thing, well, once I, once I discovered the edibles and the sleeping aids, I, I used that um, straight through all the way till, um, well, till I had surgery, but then even early on, like, I'm not going to throw out <laughs> what I had left. So I want to say it was upwards of about three to four months after surgery, I still had enough um, edibles to use the sleeping aids. And then over time, I thought, well, you know, I, I think like my energy and everything's starting to come back that, you know, I don't need them anymore, which, you know, I didn't. Um, but one other thing that I did try um, was the THCA capsules or even just eating the raw flowers. And um, yeah, I'm not an expert on marijuana, but like basically what THCA is, is just like this acid molecule that um, like in its raw form is attached to the THC. And however you heat it, whether it's like baking in um, edibles, like usually brownies or cookies are probably like the most common, um, or whether you, you know, vaporize it um, like with a... Um, uh, like, like take it through like vaping or even just like through traditional smoking, like just the, the heating it up is what breaks it off. And when, when that um, acid molecule is broken off, that's what activates the THC, like in its active form that, um, you know, does all the things that THC does. And I, I read that and I believe one of the people there had told me, I think they had a family member who had, um, some sort of inflammatory bowel disease and that's what they used. I, I'd used both capsules and also just buying the raw flowers, I would um, mash them up in like oatmeal, yogurt, um, pretty much any food that, that um, you know, you can kind of hide them in, you wouldn't really taste it much, and try to eat it in its raw form, which they say won't make you high, but I noticed if I had it in really, really large doses, um, I could feel a little bit <laughs> of a buzz. So um, I don't, I've also heard that if, if the, um, the plant starts to go brown, like if it just, they're dying out, um, I've heard that, that will also activate it. So I don't know if that's entirely true, but that would make sense because sometimes eating it raw, you know, I would feel a little bit of a buzz, but it's certainly not the same as um, the, just the regular THC, um, you know, that everyone thinks of. And um, it's, it's not supposed to make you high anyway. But that's supposed to be really good for your um, for your digestive tract and it's supposed to help with the inflammation as well. Um, so again, I, I could never really tell that much, but after a um, little over a year of using those, um, I think that was probably my overall go-to was like some of those gummy candies, the raw flowers, and the edibles at night was probably like the main routine that I settled in. And um, unfortunately, over time, like, when I had still gone in there to, um, I think I did the test where you had to swallow the capsule, or I may have had the full colonoscopy, I don't remember, um, to be honest, but um, yeah, the inflammation had really not changed much. So um, unfortunately, in, in that regard, it didn't help at all. But um, you know, for the stomach cramps, that, that worked really, really well. And I liked that because it, it didn't take, um, it didn't take much, you know, you didn't have to like get high or anything like that. It just, um, you know, ease the, um, you know, the pain and discomfort. And then, as I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the sleeping aid, um, definitely, um, had a huge, huge effect. Um, you know, but as far as like, when I first started taking it, I was a little bit cautious too, just because, um, you know, a lot of people still, um, you know, judge people for using marijuana, that they, they just want to get high or, um, you know, they, they're just drug addicts, you know, and they're not really taking it for a legitimate reason. But I can just tell you, you know, in my personal experience, that's not true at all. Because I, I'd never used it before. Um, so I think I'm a perfect example of, you know, if it's actually used as medicine, um, 
you know, it's perfectly safe. Cause I mean, as soon as I had surgery, like I mean, I haven't smoked since there's no reason to, I mean, I don't have a colon to save anymore, <laughs> you know, as I look at it that way. And then, you know, as I'd said, I still use those edibles um, in the time after that, just because, you know, I, I already had them. Um, but, you know, once my sleeping got back to normal, I had never used them since. I don't miss them. Um, you know, I, I didn't build an addiction. I mean, to me, obviously some people do get addicted to it, but I think there's definitely like more evidence of like, if you replace it with something, um, not replace it, but like use it as something, not just marijuana, but anything like if it's like some sort of a coping mechanism or like a pleasure, you know, opens up like the pleasure sensors in the brain, um, you know, you're, you're going to crave those things. So I think if you use it as medicine, it's not necessarily fun. Um, even though I said too, obviously sometimes you could have a little fun with it, but, um, well, I would imagine too, even if you do use it for fun, just like anything, if you do it in moderation, and you know, don't use it for like any time you're feeling down, or you know, as I said, whatever kind of um, whatever whatever reason you're using it for, um, if it doesn't become something you depend on or a crutch, um, you know, in my experience, again, it's you know perfectly safe. Um, but you know, it's definitely something people should be cautious with. But um, yeah, if if it's something that you have access to and you're struggling with Crohn's, I would I definitely would. Um, would recommend at least trying it. I mean, you don't have much to lose and just like with anything else, um, you know, as, as long as you kind of start easy and, um, you know, don't, don't jump into it, um, you know, and just are cautious with it. It's, you know, it's um, probably fine. Again, I'm a perfect example of that. So, yeah, I can only speak for myself, but um, yeah, if you're in a state where you're able to, um, I mean, doctors want to <laughs> give it to you, <laughs> you know, they just like doctors with their regular medications as well. Um, so I, like, I know of people that, you know, they just go to the doctor's office and say, well, obviously it's, you know, it's fully legal in California now, but you know, um, before it was, when you had to have like a medical um, reason. They would say like, oh, I'm, I'm just really stressed out or uh, I have really bad anxiety, you know, and not to downplay, you know, people that do, but it's just like, you can go in there with some very, very vague reasons. And, um, you know, if you, they're still gonna do like a background and like, you know, check that kind of thing. But I mean, as long as you're not a drug addict, like, they're going to want to prescribe it to you, you know, so um, I definitely would recommend it, you know, look into it, do some research, um, you know, talk to more people. And um, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, it'll work better <laughs> for you. It's, um, yeah, I'm glad I tried it. Um, would have been better, obviously, if it could have saved my colon, but yeah, I wouldn't be here doing all the fun things I'm doing without my colon either. So, you know, it, it all works out. But that was my experience with it. Hopefully you found that helpful. And um, yeah, I definitely would say give it a try um, if you have access to it and are struggling with Crohn's. Um, so until next time, stay hungry, be healthy.